It's the Sunday of the Prudential Singapore Criterium and I have just asked Simon Clark if he had a moment for an interview. We're out by the poolside. Hopefully the audio will be okay and you can hear what he has to say. Simon Clark is the winner of a stage of the Tour de France a couple of times, once in the team time trial in 2013 and then nine years later in with the Forest of Arenberg after the cobbled stage of the 2022 Tour de France. I thought we'd have a quick chat about the season that almost wasn't that uh, became a season to remember. I think I can pick the highlight, <laughs> but can you just talk to me about how, how everything worked out and just an overview of 2022 for you? In every pro athlete's career, you have ups and downs and some bigger than others. And, and this was a pretty big hurdle for me this year, um, coming in with no team, but I just tried to focus on, on what I could control and that was my preparation and my training and and uh, I just actually ended up focusing so much on that that I took that to a new level and that actually proved to turn into an advantage in the end. So, the, you know, I'm, I'm always an optimist and I just try to stay positive and, and make the most of any situation and, yeah, I'm not going to say it wasn't tough but, uh, you know, it ended up, you know, if you stick by it and, and stay true to yourself, you can turn a bad situation into a positive. And that's what I was able to do this year. And, and we saw the results of that. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about the stage win at the Tour, which is the, the obvious highlight, I think it was a lesson in perseverance and cunning and, and, and understanding of how a bike race unfolds. You, you are long labelled the road captain, but when uh, it was coming down to crunch time, were you expecting that to unfold the way that it did? Uh, I mean, no. It's, it was. I don't think anyone predicted it to unfold the way it did, particularly in that last kilometre. But, uh, you know, you just need to race with a calm head and know your tactic and also know the other guy's tactics and and try and predict how they will ride the final and, and you adjust accordingly. And I had a really, one memory I have of winning that stage was the, how clear a mindset I had coming into that final. And I was just so focused on, right, I knew Palace was going long. I knew Bosnagan was the fastest sprinter. So I was going to put it on him to have to chase anyone who went long. And then uh, I know Taco likes going for a long sprint. So I just was ready for that. And so then when he went with 300, I was just jumped on him and, and waited until the last possible moment. And so, yeah, I think that just having a clear mindset really made a massive difference to me in that final. There was so much experience that I tapped into in that final there from just analyzing opponents, knowing my opponents, knowing what, how good and what kind of bike riders they are. And uh, it's, it's maybe an area where a lot of other riders don't really take too much interest in studying their opponents, uh, but it, it can be a key factor coming in to winning, trying to win races like that. Yeah, yeah. It's been, uh, it's been a long career already now. And uh, when you won the stage, I, I published the story that you wrote for me uh, many, many years ago, just about your start to cycling. And I think that it resonated with a lot of people because, frankly, community rides are where it begins for a lot of people. Yeah. In 2022 and after the pandemic, there's a glut of interest in cycling. So there's a lot of people who are new to it and um, just trying to work out how they're going to play this new passion of theirs. What would you say to this group of people who are discovering the joy and the beauty yeah. of cycling? I mean, it's such a great sport. Uh, it's it's great for because you can incorporate socialising with exercise which there's not many sports where you can socialize and exercise at the same time. Uh, and so I think it's, it can be very enjoyable for even, you know, not only from a professional and racing level, but at an amateur level, it's, it's just a great sport. And I think, you know, anyone who's discovering it, just enjoy it and, and take it as far as you want to. And, and also, you know, go wherever you like, you can come to Europe, you can, Travel around Australia. There's so many places you can go ride your bike that are just beautiful, and it really it's a great way to see see places.
you were sort of not sure if the season would unfold, but now you've got a contract extension. What's going to happen just, let's say, 2023 and, and beyond? Where do you see yourself from? It, it strikes me as you'd be the kind of writer who would end up as a DS. Is, are you looking that far ahead? Uh, funnily enough, I get a lot of people telling me that. But uh, at this stage, I'm not really sure. I don't know if I want to be a director. Uh, but who knows? Never say never, but I've got a quite a few other interests and we'll see what happens. But for now, you know, I've just signed a new two year contract, so I'm not I'm not thinking about stopping uh, anytime soon. Hopefully I can keep going even longer. Uh, and then I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Okay. You had some big news a couple of weeks ago where a new arrival. How is uh, parenthood and how does it combine with with the career that takes you here, there and everywhere? Yeah, I mean, I had my second child two weeks ago and it's great. But uh, it's, as any parents, families will know, it's 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 a full-time job. So uh, just adjusting to that, but I love it. It's great. So just trying to have a real clear plan of how we organize day-to-day -day life with me and training and, and whatnot. So far it hasn't been hard because I'm, I'm in off-season, but when we get into season or have to get things planned pretty well, but so far so good, I'm loving it. I just wonder if we could just quickly sum up with a, a little overview of the Singapore experience. It's amazing to be here and, you know, it really feels like we're bringing the Tour de France to the people who they can't come and see it in Europe. And, you know, we really come to the people and, and, and show them who we are and what we're about. So I think it's a great way to market a little bit the Tour de France and, and also come and see a beautiful place like Singapore and, and put on a good show and yeah, spread, spread the word for Tour de France and also just for cycling in general. This morning you did a factor ride and um, before you departed I saw some of the crew and I was gobsmacked by the level of uh, spending on their bikes. <laughs> Could you just talk to me a little bit about Factor because uh, it was part of the, what you were doing this morning and uh, can you give a difference of what that bike is like compared to, if you remember, cast your mind back to yeah. the early days? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the main reasons why I decided to stay with uh, Israel and extend with them was because of Factor. I really like the bikes and I wanted to stay stay on those bikes uh, for the next couple of years, so um, I really like them, and uh, I think they're I think they're a super bike, uh, not only for racing, but you know, just for a, uh, an amateur level as well. They're, it's just a great great bike. So to do a ride like today and have 50 guys on factors was was really cool, and uh, you know, I think the word's really starting to spread that. Okay, they're a new company, they don't have a historical name, but they make a really good product and I think it's quite good value and uh, it's definitely worth considering. I'm going to respect your other appointment, but uh, thanks for taking no the chance to catch up and uh, I look forward to catching up hopefully at Tour Down Under, is that? Uh, I hope so, yeah. yeah. See how it works out. Super, thanks, man. No worries. Cheers. Sorry I got to run.